Hello. <laughs> Hey y'all, coming to you live from my backyard. <laughs> you can see behind me my neighbor's beautiful gardening beds. That's not what they're called. Garden beds? Yeah, garden beds. They actually used to be mine. <laughs> but since I am moving at the end of June to Spain, <laughs> surprise, I'm moving to Spain. I gave both of the garden beds to my neighbors. They are doing a really, really good job with it. I'm feeling a little bit embarrassed because my neighbor is about to pull into the driveway here and watch me record this. So yeah, I am moving to Spain. We are actually leaving on June 30th and arriving in the morning on July 1st. It's coming up right around the corner. I'm thrilled, I'm excited super nervous and terrified and full of doubt but at the same time i feel like this is the right thing to do at this moment in my life our time in chicago is sadly coming to a close it is a beautiful city and i think that people from the midwest are really special and I am glad to have lived here, but I think that Chicago was not really the right place for us in this moment of our lives, if that makes any sense. Because we moved here in 2018 and not even two years later, the pandemic started. I went from going in and commuting to my job five days a week in downtown Chicago to suddenly working from home. I'm not describing anything that's unique to me here, but just having that transition and then getting laid off from that job a few months later, being really isolated and spending a lot of time at home made sort of a huge impact on my relationship to the city and how I interacted with it. Even though it started out really strong and I had really good feelings about it all, it ended up kind of falling apart during the pandemic. That's nothing that Chicago did. It just happened to be the city that we were in during the pandemic and that's really kind of unfortunate but that's how it worked out. It's the third largest city in the US and it has not really felt like it to me. I've been really embracing my introverted side here in Chicago. I spend a lot of time at home. I now work from home 100% of the time. I don't have any friends here. I did meet one of my very, very best friends. This job that I was laid off from, Ramona, if you're watching this, I love you so much. I'm coming out of this period of isolation. Being a big homebody, I feel like I'm now ready to step into this other phase of my life and I think that is what I am really excited for with this big move to Madrid. One of the most cosmopolitan, liveliest party towns in Europe. <laughs> I'm just so excited about that. Like I don't think I'm suddenly gonna be like going to the disco and staying out till six or seven in the morning every night to not have the energy or the body for that but i am so excited about just taking advantage of all of the culture that the city has to offer i can't wait to speak spanish i can't wait to meet new friends it's really cool that they just started weed whacking in the yard next to mine and of doing that whole cliche of graduating from college or taking a gap year and going to Europe and backpacking and maybe teaching English for money. Doing it 20 plus years later, <laughs> I am not backpacking through Europe, I'm just moving to Europe. And it's actually kind of cool because now I have some savings and I can actually afford you know, like a decent apartment. That is on the horizon. I have been to Spain twice in the last two years and I don't know man, I, I went and I fell in love. 
The first time I went, I stayed with my friend who lives near the Pyrenees in a small town in Catalonia. God. <laughs> the views from this house, incredible. Just, if I could wake up to that every day, I, I think I would die. I, I couldn't help but fall in love. For a long time, I really thought that it was gonna be Barcelona. If we were gonna move to Spain, that it would be Barcelona all the way. Madrid, I think, was where we both really felt like we connected. It was just kind of everything we wanted. Big city with lots of things to do, and the people were super, super nice, and they actually spoke to my husband in Spanish, <laughs> even though he has a pretty thick accent. Everywhere else, everyone just spoke to him in English immediately, but in Madrid, they actually spoke to him in Spanish, which we both really appreciated. I love that you can drink the tap water there. That seems so stupid, but to me, it's not. <laughs> it's a huge deal. Whereas in Barcelona, everybody just buys huge bottles of water because the, the tap water there is not good. So we're just gonna um, lean against my building like a cool gal. <laughs> like, should I, should I do this? Nope. That's, no. Nope. Look at these peonies. Do you see them? I hope you can see them. Ah. God, what am I saying? I'm about to get real vulnerable with you all and show you my junk room. So you will not believe it, but this actually looks a thousand times better than it did two days ago. <laughs> I, I need to back up here so that you can get the full effect of this incredible pile of stuff in the corner. <laughs> I'm gonna work on this room for the next two hours and I will show you the aftermath. Hopefully it'll look better. <laughs> I just got back from the gym too and I put a bunch of oil in my hair. That's why it looks really shiny right now. Okay, so wish me luck. Two hours. Let's go. Okay, so we're gonna do our good old Pomodoro method. For working, I usually like to set it to 50 minutes on and 10 minutes off because I find that that interval works best for me. But as far as cleaning, I cannot hold my attention for more than 25 minutes. So we'll do it here at 25 minutes. It's already looking so much better. <laughs> that didn't take very long at all. I broke down these boxes. I will recycle those shortly. And then I'm keeping these little boxes for now because I'm hoping to sell some items online. There's some packaging material, some bubble wrap, some tissue paper, and that's some random craft stuff. And then here is a treasure box of goodies. We'll call them keepsakes because that's what they are. They don't have any sort of uh, monetary value, but they have a lot of sentimental value. I'll show you a few things. This is an old DVD of Les Mills' body step routine. I used to be a fitness instructor. Two old passports. <laughs> Gotta keep those. And then here's some old photos. There's my mom in her old house with her roses. She's still an amazing, amazing gardener. Sorry about the noise. Here's my dad. Here's my little brother. <laughs> so cute. Anyway, just some old pictures and this um, Khalil Gibran. Gibran? I don't know how to pronounce it. My dad owned this book and it's from 1974. This is his signature. And it's the Broken Wings. And I actually really want to read this. And here, I wrote all over it when I was a kid. The Broken Wings by Khalil Gibran Citadel. <laughs> okay. This is when I was just learning to, to write, as you can tell. And I feel like this was a song name. Dare Me. Stock on, stock on d Dance? I don't know. Anyway, I'm sorry to my father for writing all over his book. <laughs> my parents. 
My dad died many years ago. My mom is still alive. This is clearly a very, very precious photo. And just all in all, a very precious box that I hope the shippers do not lose. <laughs> Don't lose this, please. This is part of my decluttering strategy. Just put stuff out on the street. It's actually really smart because people take things and it's really easy. You just put it out in front of your house and I just have to watch the weather. Like as long as it's sunny, which it is today, it's beautiful, but I think it's gonna rain later. So I need to watch the weather and make sure that it doesn't rain all over my stuff. But usually if I put a box or two of stuff out here, people will sort through and, and take things home. And it's a really good way to get rid of your things and ensure that it goes to a good home, you know? I'm at the post office and I'm mailing this little package to my mom because I just found these things that I purchased for her when I was in Spain. They're little magnets and <laughs> I saw her back in February and I completely forgot to bring them to her. So I'm mailing them now. It's just part of the, whoops. It is part of the whole decluttering and cleaning up your home and organizing everything is doing the errands that you have been meaning to do for a long time and that now you really have no choice but to do this unless I want to bring the magnets back to Spain that I purchased for her <laughs> in Spain, which makes no sense. It's asking for the dimensions. Seven inches long, five inches wide, or is it seven inches wide, five inches long? Who knows? Who cares? Doesn't matter. Height is about two inches. Okay, let's see what the prices are here. We've got Priority Mail Express for $40.40. No, thank you. Priority Mail, $11.60. Okay, much better. And then you have ground advantage for $6, which sounds good to me. Okay, I hate this part. Bye bye magnets. I hope you like them, Mom. I'm not sure what this next phase of my life will bring exactly. I have this picture in my head of what it might be like, but you never know and you can never really predict what life will bring and maybe the Madrid version of myself will be different. Maybe it will be more of the same, but I can't wait to find out. I am so excited to bring Fireside English to more people, especially now that I have study club. I am excited to post flyers about study club everywhere and just try to meet people who have this same passion about languages as I do. And I can't wait.